Hi guys and welcome to The Chill where we have insightful conversations that inform, inspire and encourage you to chat your path. Today we have a very interesting guest. He's called Lionel Garang. I went to his studio at Kuwana Trust a while back and I was very fascinated by the kind of work that he does. I met him later and it seems he ran his race faster than most of his peers in the arts industry and today we have him here to tell us how a young boy from Pangani he used to do graffiti and matatus and restaurants and what have you and today he's just about to board a plane to go to China for an arts gallery and he's the only African that's doing it. So for me I'm like how is he doing this kind of thing? So welcome Lionel Garan to the show. Are you related to John Garan the late? Uh, unfortunately no, but mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather comes from the same tribe as John Garan, okay. Dinka. So the people who come from the same tribe as Dinkas, mm -hmm. normally we are named after the great John Garan. Mm -hmm. So the people, the name Garan falls under the Dinka tribe. Mm -hmm. So if, from, if you're from that tribe, you are called Garan. So tell us how you started this art journey. Uh, Where did this all begin? It began uh, after high school in 2008, mm -hmm. where while I was still in school, I was inspired by the matatus and how it was, they were pimped and that was like my normal transport from home to school. So each and every day we used to, to wait for the coolest matatu. They, they, they are more expensive, but at the end of the day, we don't mind paying more because it's, it's more fun and uh, it's cool to, to, to alight from a pimped out matatu, you know, more than that other matatu that is not pimped. It's kawaida, yeah. Uh, that one is. So after high school, uh, I, I wanted to do something that I liked. So art in our family is like also there. My brother can, can sketch very well, but he, he didn't pursue that. He's an engineer. So for me, I, I found that art is me, and I really love art, and nobody is pushing me to do art. So that is why I was building my, my passion slowly by slowly. So after, after school in 2008, uh, I went to, I saw more graphics, and luckily he's also my neighbor. So with my sketchbook and the material that I had, I took them, went and see him at his garage and then told him my story, showed him my, my ideas and my sketches and he was willing to help me. So once you met Moha, what happened? What was the next thing that you did? Did you start actually doing graffiti on the matatus? Um, it, 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 it took me through the, the process of now going to the matatu and pimping it. So before I started it, I, I was learning and watching how him and his guys were doing it. So I was helping maybe to mix the paint, uh, to, to put on the compressor, just small, small work while I was learning and I was seeing. So after some few days down the line, I was ready now to do it and he, he told me that like, this is your test. Yeah, this is a matter that I'm going to pimp. Uh, today I'm not going to use my usual guys and I'm going to use you. So let me see if you're just here to enjoy the nice music, the, 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 the cool ambience of the matatus, uh, or we are here to learn. Or we are really here to so learn. So you did a good job, obviously. I did a good job because I was keen to, to learn and also wanted to also add some of my skills and also my ideas. So we, we picked that matatu with more graphics. It was, came out very nicely. So you know the only matatus that I know that are that thing are Rungai matatus. Okay. And you know they're like a whole other story on their own. Okay. So you used to do the same thing thing as we see in the you know the Rungai matatus, yes, right? Yes, I so know. it's the same kind of thing thing. It's the same kind of work, but as we used to do this, the Nissans. So what happened when the 14 seater matatus started to be phased out? It was first frustrating. Business went down. Uh, we lost a lot of clients. I moved on from there. The experience that I got from there, I was able now to go independent. So at this point, you sit down and you're like, um, oh my god, I need to do something else, or are you still sure that you're going to pursue the arts path? Because uh, for every human being, yes. when you get to a point where this is what I'm trying to push, yes. this is my passion, this is what wakes me up every morning, but every morning you're waking up and it's not working out, you start to think, you start to doubt, yes. you start to want to take another path, okay. mostly the conventional routes where you can just get another job and yeah. move on in life. Did you get to that point? I got to that point, uh, but at the end of the day, my mom tried to hook me up where my brother works, so that uh, at least I can get a small position and then try to try to, to manage it while I'm, I go to school and try to study something else and then go up on the, on the level in the, in the company. But uh, as an artist, uh, four walls each and every day, seeing them, 
doesn't work for me. I like I like the outdoors. I like seeing different things done every day. So I told my mom I gambled with my life at that point. So I told my mom no. I can't. I can't do something because of the money. So this is when you went to start um, doing graffiti on restaurants yes. and a club clubs. around Pangani, uh, Shisha Bays, uh, some small uh, vehicles that pe people are pimping, like the Subaru. So how did you come out of it, and what was the next step for you after pimping and doing graffiti on the restaurants and what happened? One day, uh, while I was watching KBC TV, I saw this man called Mr. Patrick Adoyo. Patrick Adoyo was the acting head of XB department uh, with the National Museum of Kenya and he was talking about how they, they have a space there where artists, visual artists can come and work, sculptors can come and work. After listening to Patrick Adoyo, uh, the second day uh, I went and see him at the office, I dressed up nicely and went and confronted him with what I, at least I had something to start up with. I didn't go there clueless. You don't go at hand Yeah, at least I had something that when, I, when we sit down, ex I explain to him, this is what I've been doing before I come here. He said, okay, at least you look like an ambitious young man and why not give you a chance? So what next after the museum? Ah, the museum was great. Uh, I learned now, I became a sculptor from a graffiti street art. Before I left the museum, uh, we, we did a lot of projects there mm -hmm. and also with Kevin when we, we got the opportunity to learn what we learned we had to learn it very quickly. You soak it all up. Yeah, yes, very quickly. You never know when the sun's going to Yeah, just one, one day we just woke up and then everything changed. Mr. Adeo told us there are no more funding for, for this project. Artists are not able to be in that space again. That project is ending. He's retiring from, from his position. So even him is leaving. So after that, yeah, there were no more artists there. Kevin moved, he, he was from Corner Trust, I didn't know that he was working, actually based there, but also working at the museum. So I rang up Kevin, I called him and I talked talk to him, because uh, now I can't go to the museum, the museum is no, no longer an artist free zone. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I told me that he's working on a project at Sokimau railway station, there's this new railway station is being built there. And then he told me, uh, tomorrow if you, if you want to come, you can come and help out. So the next day, I woke up very quickly, early in the morning, dressed up, <laughs> up to Sokimau. And then, yeah, we, we started working on the project, helping out, uh, at least learning also, uh, interacting with different people, learning all the skills, how to, to put bronze, uh, how, how to, to suspend a big sculpture from the, from the roof without using ropes, uh, using wires. I didn't know that. Me, if you could told, if you could ask me, I could say just a rope. I don't think it's time it will, it will get weak and weak and then it will just break. Yeah. But now I was able now to learn that there's some wires that you just need to put there and then some small hooks and then it will stay there forever. And you know the reason I really like this Tokimo story is partly because I have lived in Tokimo for a very good amount of my life yeah. and I have used the train station so I know exactly the sculpture you're talking about. So it's even better when you can sit down and see that this is the guys who worked on this thing. And obviously now I want to meet Kevin. Anyway, in the next part, we're going to speak about how Lionel went into Kuwana Trust and how the journey at Kuwana Trust has made him become who he is today. So for anyone who's trying to get into the arts industry today, um, make sure you watch the next part to find out how can you grow from A to B and how do you start making money from arts.